Now, while Jesus was on the Mount of Olives with his disciples, all the religious leaders were gathered together in Jerusalem at the palace of the chief priest named Caiaphas to conspire against Jesus. Look at verse 3. Then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. But they said, not during the feast of Passover, lest there be an uproar among the people. So verse 3, all of the religious leaders were gathered together, plotting how they might kill Jesus. Now these are the re- these are the leaders of Judaism. And they are conspiring to murder someone. And not just anyone, the son of God. Jesus Christ. And it says they are plotting to take him by trickery. They've tried unsuccessfully to entangle him in his words. We saw that in chapters 21 to 23. They tried to get him to say something wrong, to get him to say something heretical, but they couldn't entangle him in his words or in his doctrine. And so they resort to trickery, to deception. And notice in verse 5, they do not want to take him and kill him during Passover because that might cause a riot among the people. Remember, during Passover, um, millions of people came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So the city is is overflowing with people. And the Bible tells us the common people received Jesus gladly. Just a few days before this, on Sunday, Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding into the city on a donkey in fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9, presenting himself as king. And, And all of the multitudes went out to welcome him into the city and to embrace him as king and Messiah. And so because of the popularity of Jesus among the people, the religious leaders want to wait until after Passover is over. When the crowds return home, they don't want to kill Jesus during Passover because that might cause an uproar among the multitudes. But again, Passover is God's appointed time for the crucifixion. And Jesus will be crucified on Passover. God is in control of the crucifixion. Not the religious leaders. God is in control. Jesus was crucified according to God's plan. On God's schedule. Not the religious leaders plan. And not their schedule. You know, in, in, in a week we'll celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and In Luke's account of the birth of Jesus Christ, Luke's account in Luke chapter 2, it begins by telling us that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And so everyone returned to his own city or his, his hometown. And the decree of Caesar caused Joseph and Mary to leave Nazareth in the Galilee and return to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown, to be registered for tax purposes. And it was while they were in Bethlehem that Mary went into labor and gave birth to Jesus, fulfilling the prophecy in Micah 5, 2, that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Caesar thought he was issuing a decree to register everyone for tax purposes, But really, God had Caesar issue that decree to cause Joseph and Mary to return to Bethlehem to fulfill prophecy so that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. God was in control, not Caesar. And God used Caesar, this pagan ruler, without Caesar even knowing it. And God used Caesar. Caesar was just a puppet. God used him to accomplish his plan. Well, in a similar way, God will use the religious leaders to accomplish his plan. The religious leaders want Jesus put to death on a cross. And so does God the Father. God the Father wants Jesus put to death on a cross to atone for the sins of the world. And what the religious leaders meant for evil against Jesus, God will use for good. 
to bring salvation to mankind. And so now we go into verse 6. We're told in verse 6, And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. They would sit on the ground. The tables were very low. They'd sit on the floor on pillows. And when his disciples saw it, they were very indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. And assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Back up in verse 6, Jesus was in Bethany, which was only a short distance from Jerusalem. It's up over the crest of the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem. Jesus often stayed in Bethany when he would go to Jerusalem for the different feasts. Uh, he, he never really stayed in Jerusalem for the night. He would go into Jerusalem, he would minister, he would preach, uh, but then at night he'd, he'd leave. He wouldn't stay in the city, and he would often stay out in Bethany, the village of Bethany. Bethany was also the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, uh, the brother and sisters who lived together in Bethany. Bethany is also where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Uh, in the town of Bethany today, it still exists. Uh, today, it is an Arab town. It has an Arab population. It's predominantly Muslim. But the name of the town today in Arabic, it literally means the town of Lazarus. So even to this day, the town is known for the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. So Jesus was in Bethany, where he was likely staying. He's having dinner at the house of of Simon the leper. Now, this is the first time Simon the leper is mentioned in the Bible. We don't really know much about Simon the leper. 